in the dark shadows, in the white cold. Fearlessly we search for knowledge new and old. We drink the strong spirits and read the ancient tomes. The order of the Abracast. We are the brave and the bold. The strange evolution for getting rid of evil spirits. Chasing witches, a religious rite. Witches can make themselves at home in many ways. According to a ritual of Jewish behavior, it it appears witches can get into clothes and into man overnight. Lying in women should be apprehensive of evil spirits. Hence, magic words are prepared For such as lion, Christians use Bibles under their pillows and Catholics use metal, medals, beads, or prayer books for a similar purpose. Orthodox Jews believe that witches abound in heaps of rubbish or in bunches of tops of vegetables if thrown away together eggshells must be broken witches can harm a person alone in darkness but not if there are two or three persons together a burning light is proof against evil spirits the abracast occult history conspiracy and violence Welcome, everybody. We're recording this evening from deep inside the Stigmata Studios building in the steel buckle of the Rust Belt. I am John Towers, and this is the Abracast. Tonight we're continuing with our uh, Witchcraft in America episode. This is part two. The, um, The book we're working out of this evening is The Realness of Witchcraft in America. By A. Monroe Orand Jr., 1942. The copyright was never uh, renewed, though. So this is a this is fun. We had fun the last uh, time we did the the witchcraft in America stuff, and as you can see, things are going to get a little uh, dicey here from the cold from the cold open. Uh, before we get rolling, I would like you to know that I got the wizard card in, so. Um, if you're new to the show or you don't know what I'm talking about, I recently released a deck of tarot cards and the tarot cards that I, so I designed them. I did the whole thing and there. There's a, if you sign into the newsletter, there is a Google doc where basically there's a very long Google document that has a full color shot of the card. And then I go on to explain what the card's all about. So this would be like the guide. If I had a guide, if I had one printed to go with the cards, that is what it would be. And all you got to do is sign into the newsletter to, to, um, to check it out. Um, yeah, anyhow. So I have a magician card in my tarot, in my tarot deck, the Crowley, when he did his Thoth deck, he has three magician cards. If you get the full scale size deck, you get, you get three magician cards. If you get like the little half-ass deck or whatever, I mean, it's still a cool deck, but they only have one of the magicians in there. Anyhow. So I thought it would be cool to do like as a sidebar to do kind of like an alternative deck, one card at a time. So you have the minor arcana. That's the, you know, the wands, the cups, the swords, the pinnacles in my deck are the coins. So you have the minor arcana, then you have the major arcana, which is like the fool, the magician, the high priestess, uh, the emperor, the empress, so on and so forth. But so I'm going to have an alternate arcana. I'm going to have the vulgar arcana. 
and I already have a pretty cool plan for it, but I'm just doing it one kind of card at a, at a time. I'm going to use them for like special promotional things or whatever. So if I owe you a wizard card, it is on its way to you and they look great. The first thing I did when I got home is I just slid it right into the deck that I've been working on and it's really cool. And then I'm finalizing the third magician card, which I guess I posted a preview of it on Instagram so you can check it out. I, I like literally just took it. I took a photo on the phone of my computer screen. So it looks a little pixelated or whatever. Like it's not a clear cut print, you know, ready version. It's just a preview, but it's called the alchemist. I'm pretty proud of them. And if you guys have been listening to the show, specifically the alchemy episodes, check it out and let me know if you get it. Let me know if you get it. So wizard card, they're in. Boom! I'm working on trying to figure out a way for you guys to get them. If you're, if you didn't, the the wizard card was available for five and ten dollar tier Patreon supporters. So if you're not a five or ten dollar Patreon supporter and you want to get a hold of the card, I'm working on ways to make it available. I got a stack of them, man. They're so awesome looking. You could get a look at them also on my Instagram page. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, since we're talking about witchcraft in America, I wanted to uh, point out the new shirts. Uh, we got a new shirt this week. Um, and it, it, I don't want to describe it too much. If I describe it, it might turn some people off, but it's called the Osculum in fame. That's the name of the card. It's based on a famous, uh, woodcut, but so check out, um, Instagram for a preview of that. Yeah. So that'll be available when, uh, when I publish this, uh, when I publish this episode. So the, um, the wizard cards are in and the osculum in fame t-shirt. <laughs> um, Also got a shipment of tarot cards. So if you purchase tarot cards, you may be waiting. And I've been telling you how long the printers are going to take because of COVID-19. They're on their way if you don't have them already. Okay, enough of this. Let's get into this book. Back into this book. Thank you to all my Patreon and subscribe star supporters, by the way. All right, so we're starting into this section called The Strange Evolution for Getting Rid of of evil spirits. So we're going to just kind of jump in here after this burning light is a proof against evil spirits business. Uh, we have not heard many of these same notions. Have we not heard of many of these same notions among people of Jewish extraction? What makes a man or a woman superstitious, his religion or the lack of it? Several, uh, particularly impressive evidences of a belief in witches or a witchcraft may be cited. The custom of the Orthodox Jew, Catholics and Protestant laymen are compared as excerpted from a book on the Jews. The next holy day is called Sukkoth, i.e., tabernacle or booth see leviticus chapter 23 34 this holiday they celebrate eight days though but seven are commanded in leviticus 23 because of uncertainty from which of the two days of the new year they are to begin their reckoning during which eight days they eat and they drink and some even sleep every night in their tabernacle Leviticus twenty three forty two, and in their synagogues they have citron in their left hand and a branch and a palm tree in their right to which branch they tie a bunch of thick bows of myrtle. Leviticus twenty three forty, and with these weapons in hand, they hold both their hands close together, and whilst the reader sings the how do in the Hallel and the Hosienna, they exercise with their palm branch, shaking the point of the first three times towards the east, then three times towards the south, 
and three times towards the west, and then three times towards the north, and then three times towards the heavens, and last of all, three times towards the earth. Whereby they suppose to chance away all the evil spirits hovering about the synagogue to intercept their prayers and hinder them from going up into heaven. Chasing evil spirits away, away has been the business of man since witches were invented in the Old Testament. You can read it in your Bible. In addition to the Jews, the Catholic clergymen shake a, re- a ritualistic object to bless the individual, the automobile, and bless the firemen and bless the police force or wherever it is to be blessed. In the motion of the magic wand, in the use of the magical words in Latin, create a ring of angels about the object of blessing, a ring so great and so strong that evil spirits cannot get close, so long as the angels are not caught unawares, which blessings last no longer than one whole year. The result is that blessing like oil will float constantly on top while they last. We've seen exactly the same method of uh, procedure caught by the newsreel movie, The Man in the Backwoods, a settlement in North Central Pennsylvania a few year a Pennsylvania a few years ago. When a man of little or no religious conviction chased the witches away from his home. With a wave of his hand and unintelligible words, just like these priests, without the, the benefit of clergy. From whence came his idea, his methods, and his power. The menace which he sought to dissolve was not returned to his ramshackle mountain hut, for it had we would have seen it in the papers. From... Little known facts about the ritual of the Jew, uh, ritual of the Jews in esoteric folklore of the Pennsylvania Germans, published by Orand Press, Harrisburg, in 1939. From these brief evidences of the Jewish and the Catholic service, whether to bless or to chase away, we have every reason to suppose that the backwoodsmen. Oh, listen, the editor says, who was probably a poor Protestant and hope in his mind when he deliberately charged in four directions with the distinct yah, yah. We find that word in the lesser key of Solomon and the greater key of Solomon from each motion into the most readers of this account. His ritual would have had as much meaning as they would have had attended service in a Catholic church or a synagogue. We are supposed and conclude that the layman's prayers would go unanswered, while the ordained official servant could actually obtain intercessions. What do you conclude? His backwoodsman's prayers are of no likely success that impels you to think that you or any other person speaking for you can gain a favorable ear where prayers are heard. I mean, that's some kind of elitist bullshit, isn't it? Like only God listens to prayers from holy men? I don't know. Beliefs of early Pennsylvania Germans, Julius Frederick Sachi and the German pietist of the provincial Pennsylvania gives an interesting word picture of the early days. In part, he says, another custom then in vogue among the Germans in Pennsylvania was the wearing of an on uh, an an onhangazel which is a kind of uh, astrological amulet. In rare cases, a thin stone or a sheet of metal was used in place of parchment. These onhenangles or zuberzetels, as they were called, were prepared by the mystics of the community with certain occult with hold on with certain occult ceremonies at such times as the culmination of a particular star or conjunction of a certain planet 
or planets and supposed to exercise the extraordinary influence over the destiny of the bearer, particularly in averting disease, checking the power of the evil spirits and defending the wearer from malice and harm. Hardly an adult or a child was to be found without one. All right, I'm going to have to look at I'm going to have to fucking figure these things out now. Zabuel tells. Hold on, I'm just making a quick note. I'll be back to it in one second. Thank you for your indulgence. Frequently, a charm of this kind would be placed upon an infant immediately upon its birth, as well as upon a corpse prior to internment. Independent of the above described charms and talismans, there was another kind of superstition common to the general populace, and this was known as Brisprechen, a kind of conjuration for the cure of the wounds or minor diseases in both man and beast. The ceremony was nearly always performed by an old man or woman, usually the latter. That to maintain their efficiency day, the formula had to be handed down by an alteration of the sexes. So this is interesting. Um, I don't know how much to tell about this story. Fuck. Um, I don't know how much to tell about the story. So I'm not going to tell any of it. <laughs> uh, my buddy bought a house out in coal country. Just down the river of down the river a piece from yins and that down down there and uh uh we were helping him we weren't helping him move in what we were helping him do we were helping him to rip some carpet out or something and we were walking around the house and he has these little scroll looking things attached to the door frames on the inside of the door and i'm like what are these things man and he starts explaining to me that they're uh they're like jewish uh spells or Jewish charms to protect the, uh, to protect, um, the, basically the portal, the entrance to the house or, or to the room. These things were found in a couple of the rooms. Like I think there was one in his bedroom and there was one in what was, what he was turning into the nursery for his child that was, that was coming up. And, uh, I just thought it was fascinating. I never heard of it before. I never heard of like some, Jewish spell of protection and he had inherited it with the house. These things came with, um, with the house. I thought it was fascinating. So when his kid was born, I actually gave him a seat, um, some Catholic pennant. Someone gave me before I was going into the army for protection. And I was like, well, you got all this Jewish protection here. Here's some Catholic protection too. (laughs) Okay. Um, okay. We may easily assume that an old man or woman who might thus be called on to extend sympathy where venerable in a sense and a fair substitute to the occasional itinerant minister or preacher or the physician still more difficult to have when distance and impracticability had to be reckoned with. These old venerables were satisfactory in a pinch as we say, would they be no less in any other time of need? Okay, the next section we're moving into is called Charms and Trinkets are Revered by Many of Our People. Many charms may be used. We mention but a few good luck and health charms are worn in the hope of avoiding evil or ill health. This is just another name for evil witches. There is the garlic sack, onion stockings, the bag or sack with hot bacon and pepper. Hey, hot bacon and pepper. The crucifix, medals which have been blessed, the parchment containing prayers, etc., bones, teeth, and many other items, all more or less witch charms. It may not be amiss to remind the reader that one can scarcely ever find a Catholic, Irish, or Italian, or other extraction who is not wearing a charm suspended from his neck 
one near the heart carrying one pocket or purse. Likewise, it is easy to find many charms blessed by priests for a dollar or two. Affixed to automobiles owned or driven by Catholic drivers. It is fair play for us to declare that if they feel that some good will come from wearing these charms, then the same sign they will not need to fear any evil. It is the old story all over again. One man's meat may be another man's poison. The readers and a lot of his relatives do lots of things the Jews and the Catholics do not find in harmony with their philosophy. Old world and new world charm. Letters of protection. We know them in America or sometimes Himmel's briefs, as they are known both here and in Germany, are quite common in America. Or were not many years ago. I wonder if this is what he's I wonder if this is what Kite is talking about. Himmel's briefs. Okay. <laughs> so I said his name. Okay, the guy's name is Kaida. Ali Kaida. <laughs> it's from my professional wrestling days. <laughs> the guy had a terrorist gimmick. <laughs> I, we'd beat the shit out of each other. I'd wear a Captain America shirt and whip, we'd beat the fuck out of each other. But the guy was a, he was a good guy. Ali Kaida. Many Pennsylvanian German homes have large or perhaps a smaller copy framed as others would have, for instance, the Lord's Prayer or the, model, the motto, God bless our home. And having the same end in view, but English versions of the Himmel's Brief also received a large circulation as late as 1918 and during the war in that time and since then. We accepted an order for printing copies of this letter of protection in 1918 when we learned subsequently handed to members of the National Guard to those draftees who went into the service for several uh, central counties of Pennsylvania. These charms were limited in their circulation to friends of the party from whom we did the printing. Since that date, however, we have learned a great deal more about witchcraft as an age-old subject and its uh, conforting assurance that those who protect or those who are protected while carrying such a charm, no less than the Catholic who has the charm constantly on him or her. Quoting from C.J.S. Thompson's book, Mysteries and Secrets of Magic, at page 270, we read on one of these letters written by a pope for a kingly subject follows. According to the writer of this manuscript, King Charles I is said to have carried a charm against danger and poison that was written for him by Pope Leo IX, and it was ascribed as follows, quote, Who that beareth it upon him shall not dread his enemies to be overcome, nor with no manner of poison be hurt, nor with no need misfortune, nor with no thunder shall not be smitten, nor lightning, or in no fire be burnt suddenly, nor in no water be drowned, nor it shall not die without shrift nor will thee be taken. Also, as he shall have no wrong, neither of lord or lady. This be in the name of God and of Christ, Messiah, Sother, Emmanuel, Sibboath. Look, look, man, he's summoning. <laughs> he's summoning. This is great. Now I need to do it. Hold on. Mm-mm. Letters of protection. A Locks keep out the witches in olden times or Pennsylvania rural life some 50 years ago by H.L. Fisher, Esquire. 
York, Pennsylvania, 1888, appears a great many poems. Part of one of them reveals the attitude of most rural folks a century ago. It was quite the proper thing for preachers to excite their people with stories about fire and the brimstone and perhaps hell and damnation, angels and devils or Satan and witches. Where does one go nowadays to hear sermons of this sort? Say Mr. Fisher in part. Whether scripture, whether scripture was read or prayers were said is more than the writer remembers. But it runs in his head ere the two went to bed and they carefully covered the embers. Yea, even much more they locked every door upon horses, cows, heifers, and strucks. The house doors were barred and the gateways tarred, thus showing their faith in their works. What more could be done, Smith loaded his gun with powder and ball and with shot. Near the head of my bed I'll have it, he said, and for witches and thieves make it hot. Gun loaded and cocked, and all the doors locked, let the witches and thieves do their best. Gates bolted and barred, and some even tarred. Man and beast might slumber and rest. Learn more at abracast.com. Get bonus content by signing up for the mailing list. Get all that plus many exclusive episodes by supporting the show at patreon.com or subscribestar.com. Hi, I'm Lisa. I like coffee. Bonfires. Walks in the beach. Old books. But you know what I want? Yeah, I just want to remind everybody real fast about the new t-shirt, the Osculum in fame t-shirt. This is, I'll explain a little bit more. This is the blast, the shameful or the blasphemous kiss, which is give the devil when they enter into a covenant with him. Maybe that explains it a little bit more. All right. So back to it. Some of the famous, some of the quote famous unquote witch trials in Pennsylvania. Early witch trial in Pennsylvania. To illustrate the extremely fortunate circumstances of having so few witch trials in Pennsylvania, we bring to you the reference of the first reported case, which it turned out not to be much of a case at all, in which William Penn uh, sat in judgment and let it speak for itself. There, <laughs> there is in our powwow book, R. Duran Press, Harrisburg, 1929, a detailed account of what appears to be the only witch trial in the entire history of the colony, province, or commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Margaret Matheson and Yeshro Hendrickson, they were Swedish women, had been accused as witches, and the jury accordingly found a true bill. Absentee jurymen were fined 40 shillings each. The first mentioned pleaded not guilty on the charge that she was she had bewitched calves, geese, etc. 
But that, while she could bewitch cattle, oxen were above her reach. Her daughter's <laughs> suspicions <laughs> and convictions were given in evidence, but the prisoner denieth all things. Governor Penn charged the jury, which brought in the verdict sufficiently ambiguous and ineffective for such dubious offense, saying that they find her guilty of having the common fame of a witch, but not guilty in the manner and the form in which she stands indicted. The women were put on their good behavior for six months. It's not bad. You know, bewitching a couple calves and geese and getting away with just a... Good, good behavior for six months? That sounds pretty good. It may be pointed out that in the early days of the ca- the colony, we had, a, by precedent, a statute of King James I. That act, they say Watson and his annals of Philadelphia and Pennsylvania, was held to be part of our law by an act of our provincial assembly entitled an act against conjuration witchcraft and the dealing with evil and wicked spirits but all around us in the early days one heard of witches and witchcraft virginia new jersey new york and new england where even today there is a state or nation whereupon one cannot find such beliefs folklore and customs are long lasting because we have um, never learned of such Things is a poor assumption that there is no such a thing. The pen decision reminds one on the account of a Jesus in the temple, writing on the ground with his finger and saying, as we read in John 8, 7, He that is without sin amongst you, let him cast the first stone at her. This is their stoning a whoer. In John 8, 9, in which they heard it, being convinced by their own conscience, they went out one by one. Several near witch trials, the case of the York boys, three of them, who murdered an old man for a book or a lock of hair back in 1928, is well known throughout America. It was about that time that the newspaper needed some inoculations in the matter of a new line of news, and the, the York case was certainly went a long way to fill that bill. They, they're saying it was a slow news day. <laughs> Subsequently, a baby at Lebanon died of malnutrition, and again, the witch, the witch doctor... Got it in the neck, and the newspapers got the news. In the same neighborhood, a buried treasure hoax got abroad, and the headlines got a lot of hex ideas across. In the case in Lay County, tried to rear its head a dozen years ago, but it was a witch, a witch case that they were still trying to solve. Then in Bechtel. Uh, The Bechtel case in Philadelphia, a Mennonite who was murdered, the authorities, at first declaring it witchcraft, which it wasn't. Murder for insurance is hardly witchcraft. Recently, closing its records, the Philadelphia court charged a number of persons with witchcraft. Or at least having was an impression left after reading the newspapers. The cause turns out to be nothing more than a murder for insurance. Surely a hard way off from witchcraft. The Shinsky case in 1934. There was a case of Albert Shinsky near Pottsville. Notable for the fact that he claimed he killed a witch in self-defense. And that nothing whatsoever happened in the affair to prove or disprove the theory regarding witches, other than that they're they are a creature of the mind, and of that fact there is little or no doubt. Newspapers at the time published a copyright account of a writer, some of them screaming headlines, did Bible figure in witch slaying. 
In the article that's published, we had not established positively that the Bible did figure, but it suggested it could have. This conclusion was supported by a few days later when a professor from Philadelphia University, accompanied by an officer, called on Shinsky in his jail cell. The warden, William Watson, of Schulkill County Prison, reported that Albert Shinsky believed that the murder of Miss Mummini who was a witch, was justified in the Bible. Warden Watson was quoted in the Philadelphia Inquirer, March 26, 1934, as follows, quote, He told me, said the warden, that there was a numerous instances in the scriptures where the sacrifice of human life had been declared necessary. He cited the Old Testament tale of how Abraham was about to kill his son Isaac on the altar as showing the necessity for taking human life to placate spiritual curses or spells. He told me that all the New Testament writers clearly believed in the power of demons and that the devil was real, was a real personage and not merely an evil influence as modern theologists have it. The Bible represents the devil as a fallen angel who goes about whispering and suggesting evil acts like the Osculum Infame t-shirt now available. If you will read closely, you will find that hell was made for the torment of the devil and not human beings, as a way of escape from that place he has provided for us. An eminent psychiatrist, Dr. A. I. Baron of Philadelphia, who examined Shinsky in jail, reports that, quote, <clears throat> When I left his cell after an exhaustive research as far back as his earliest memories, I knew I had been talking to an adolescent boy of the most primitive development. I had been talking with a mental and emotional infant. If the state demands the death penalty in Schuylkill County's Hex Slayer, society will will be seeking revenge upon a 13-year-old savage. Dr. Barton or sorry, Bartone, I can't remember how I pronounced it, reported that Shinsky, although 23 years old, quote, has actually been five different people, each personality at war with the other four, unquote. Quote, in medical phraseology, an an emotional, imaginative extrovert with schizophrenic reactions, unquote. If, psychiat- if psychiatrists were called to examine 100 or 1,000 adults taken from the streets at random, we wonder how many of that number would have the large traces of the same disease attributed to Shinsky. Surely the things he bred in his mind can be, find- can be found in the minds of all too many others. It is probably true, as pointed out elsewhere in this account, that religion and superstition walk hand in hand, that children learn about this and that, but cannot, when they reach adulthood, separate their thoughts from those learned as a child. The general effects of this inability to forget surely has taken their terrible toll in the history of men. Yet, on the other hand, if we would forget as easily as would be necessary to get rid of witches, we would as likely forget to whom we are married, those kids belong to who, and certainly where we live. Whether Miss Mummini was a witch or not, we shall never know. And the authorities sent Albert to a place for men with, quote, weak minds, unquote. The late Clarence Darrow Esquire was interested in the York witch case. The late Clarence G. Darrow Esquire. (laughs) Eminent eminent lawyer and scholar is quoted in reference to the York witchcraft case at the sentencing of a 14-year-old John Curry to life in prison. Quote, outrage, unquote, is the one word expressed by Darrow who then queried, do you think the state of Pennsylvania will stand for this? 
seems a terrible outrage. Yes, the state did stand for it, although after something like 10 years, Curry was released from the penitentiary. (laughs) While many persons did not like all of Darrow's opinions, nonetheless, he was a deep thinker. And we record here the opinions regarding the York case as reported in the Harrisburg Patriot, uh, February 21, 1929. Quote, belief in witchcraft cannot in itself be thought of as a crime. If it is, there would be but a few of us really innocent. Not so many years ago, our best people, the devout Christians, not only believed in witches, but guaranteed their celestial happiness by murdering them. We placidly admit that there are sections of our country where people are isolated by their own customs and thought, or by geography, and live quaintly in century and half behind our little more enlightened communities. But we forget a mere century and a half takes us almost back to Cotton Mather at the stake and the witches were hanged for the glory of God and for the peace of mind of those who thought they had been, might, or be witched. There are no today, uh, there are today groups of people who have advanced but little in mentality beyond the ignorant frenzy that glorified hangings. Even today, a little literal interpretation of the Bible would force us to believe in witchcraft and sorcery and those simple folks of which that Curie boy is a product hold strictly to the world just as they find it. To them, the witch of Endor is very real. Uh, the devil is real. Spells are real. Their world, furnished by traditions, myths, old world lore, handed down unchanged from one generation to another, there are evil spirits as certainly as a flying railroad train bearing down on a motorist stalled on a track. Is there any doubt Curry and those others believed that Raymer had an evil power which he could exercise at will? Is there any doubt that they thought a lock of his hair would break this spell? Nothing new in that belief, nothing unusual. Reach into your own pocket for your own personal protector against bad luck. Our belief in capital punishment as a deterrent is just another form of witchcraft. Apart from the mass desire for revenge, there is a subconscious desire to rid ourselves of what we believe to be an evil person. We look in vain for any proof that executions have had any effect on crime. When England punished by death everything from bread and sheep stealing to wholesale killing, crime was far more general than it is today. Education and the training of youth and trades and professions have diminished crime, never never the death penalty. Isn't there every reason to believe that the crime of murder is a symptom in the York case? It is clearly a symptom of prevailing ignorance, a condition which never be allowed to exist in the state of Pennsylvania. Those little differences between science and folklore. This is a new section. No witches. No witches. No angels. The readers must reach this conclusion in his own reasoning. We are not intent to pursuing you to uh, to be- persuading you to believe in something you do not want to believe. Persuasions are not made that way. If we do not have witches, as some tell us, then we cannot have angels, according to those others who feel they do some thinking too. Deny, denying the one and not excluding the other makes a man's everyday reasoning look really silly, doesn't it? Hmm. There's a lot to say there, isn't there? 
when we compare notes with men of the cloth and the possibility of there being witches in the world, and here at home they usually greet the comment with a rather blank expression, but no rebuttal. Yet it must be made true that if we do have witches in witchcraft in Pennsylvania, in and out of religious circles, we have great faith in the belief in the presence and the power of angels. Not only those who hovered over the hills in Judea, but also the red and blue hills of our beloved Pennsylvania and the purple mountains majesty. I added that part to accept belief in one element and not the other would tend to destroy the joys of many holidays fostered by the Christian church. This uh, state to banish beliefs in witches. One of the most interesting news items we have seen in two score years apparently appeared in one of the Harrisburg papers a few years ago. It was inspired in one of the highest state departments, but uh, got out of the department and into the papers without the head man knowing anything about it. Or so he says. This is the item. Read it thoroughly. C. Education Ending Hex Beliefs in Pennsylvania Dateline Harrisburg During the Earl Administration State educators declared here yesterday that the hexery, the terror of numerous rural farm communities for many years, is being banished from Pennsylvania by the public schools. School authorities explained the instructions in the sciences and even in the lower grades has proved the most effective weapon against the superstition. They say that hex symbols calculated to cause illness in farmhouses or diseases of cattle still may be seen on farms and houses, but the younger rural folk spurn beliefs that frightened their kin only a few years back. Court records show the hex responsible for many crimes, including murder and arson, during the past 50 years. Many times of news to get into the papers, all types of stories, but it is noteworthy to record uh, that someone had in mind becoming a new savior of the human race. How the world... Are the school authorities going to do all this? Do they think the children will remember only what they learn in school? Wow. (laughs) You can juxtapose this right on top of just about everything we're hearing about the school system right now, right? Only what they learn in school and forget all they learn at home and in Sunday school, churches and theatres and on the streets. Will the school teach a new truth that is all good and nothing is evil? Wow. And won't the kids forget? With teachers who are recruited from every type of religion, some anti-religious and some too religious, that will impress. Will make, uh, will that make on this, uh, what impress will that make on the student? As against science? Will the public school system evolve into a new plan of study that will prove the stories in the Bible to be something different than children have been led to believe for years? Or just not teach the Bible? Or anything about religion? Or take God out of the Pledge of Allegiance? And then stop saying the Pledge of Allegiance? (laughs) And what will the new studies have to say on the subject of let us say, holy water, as used by the Catholics in their devotions, or even plain water as used by the Protestants in their baptism ceremonies. If the schools that support this phase of religion and its symbolism, will they declare that water for baptisms or holy water are effectacious when used in a religious sense, but not to be effect when used by witch doctors, either at their home or abroad. Science already agrees that there is no value to either these waters or service, but it is forced down the throats of youngsters. It will upset the plans of the church fathers of all creeds. The latter claim that the holy water accompanied by prayers has a special virtue that beats anything science has yet produced. Can school learning overcome this belief? I mean, oh my God, I'm trying to stay in my lane here, 
But whoa, brother. This reminds me of the the teacher. Where was he? He was like, the scariest thing for me is that some conservative parents will listen to my Zoom meeting with my students, my Zoom class with my students and hear what I'm teaching them. Wow. Did you guys hear about that? And there was another school district sending out these forms where parents are pledging not to eavesdrop into their Zoom classes. That's got to make you wonder, right, man? I mean, I am so happy I don't have kids, bro. Jesus Christ. Like, it's all going down. I have a whole I have a whole thing. It's turning into a talk. I have a whole theory. Okay, I'm sorry. The science which the school authorities are teaching is a poor science that says hex slings and practices are so much more vicious and devastating in Pennsylvania than sex slings. There are many practices so much more degrading and superstitious than those thousands and one promises delivered from 100,000 platforms in America and throughout the world, which never come through in the worst and the countless self abuses, which they say little or nothing, and certainly not in public press. The state and the school authorities flounder in their own mire when they fail to recognize that many of our superstitions are condoned and taught within church and school, in which per se makes them perfect or the white art. But when practice outside church or school makes them the black art. And let us talk about Halloween, the season when witches, vampire bats, black cats, and fantastics with their false, false faces and hideous makeup are abroad in all America, where if you please... We do see greater evidences of survival of the idea of witches than at the grade schools of America. We received a number of very interesting comments from well-known Americans on the subject of science. Science, folks. It's just science. You just got to listen to the science versus witches in the schools. Some are, for, some are from physicians, professors, educators, writers, and just everyday plain citizens. So I am John Towers. This is the this was the Abercast. And thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode. I enjoyed it very well. Very much. Thank you for listening to this episode. Send an email or visit us on social media to let us know what you think about this topic. And please remember to leave a five star rate and review. Just remember to check out the Osculum in Fame t-shirt that's now available. Go to Abercast.com, the store section. While you're there, check out the tarot cards. And, uh, yeah. The tarot cards are cool because, like, I do, like, a little video for each set of, like, each kind of set of them. Kind of just go through the highlights and explain the cards a little bit. It's cool. And if you want to know more about my set of tarot cards that's not covered in the videos or the website sign into the mail the mailing list the Falgar correspondentia and uh, check out that google doc i was talking i was talking about hey did you learn something did you laugh supporting me is a way for you to be a part of the abercast and ensure its growth and sustainability it also means i can create a normal schedule for shows and bonus shows as well as the exclusive fellow craft episodes by supporting the show you are not only a listener but you are a part of the show you supporting the show gives me a way to offer fun rewards as a thank you for showing your appreciation and support for our projects do you have an idea for a reward that you don't see let me know my supporters are my partners I currently pay for you to listen to the Abercast. Not only do I pay the hosting bills out of my own pocket, I volunteer my time and uh, 
talent to each and every episode of the Abercast. The price of books, the time and resources of reading and researching, the massive amounts of gin and tonic needed, the equipment it takes to record the shows, the time and resources it takes to create the bonus material, and the cost to maintain the internet presence. Is it worth your support? I don't know. I am proud of the Abercast, and I feel like I'm improving all the time. In addition uh, to creating the show that you dig and that you are excited about, I also have a full-time commitment and other obligations. So why financial support? All of the supporters help me focus my time in on the quality and development of the podcast. And what if you can't afford, you know, $1 or $3 or $10 or whatever a month? Believe me, I get that. There are many degrees of support, but if you can't support the show financially, please consider leaving a five-star rate and review on your preferred podcast app. And don't forget that you could sign into the mailing list and still unlock a lot of bonus content. Thank you. I cannot put into words how much it means to me that you listen to the show each time I post a new episode. Your feedback, support, and love of the stories that we talk about here is what keeps me going. 